Oh, hey there. Don't you love those moments in gaming that you simply can't get anywhere else? Moments like when you first arrive on the Halo in Halo, going through the last stage of Castlevania while the awesome music plays in the background, or playing on a Mario Kart's Rainbow Road for the first time. Or maybe it's just playing a game that you've been hyped to play for a while, and now you finally have a chance to play it. Moments like that in gaming are truly amazing, right? Yeah. Stop daydreaming, class is over! Alright, let's go to the playground. Oh, oh wait, who, who made this game? Oh no. Electronic Arts, or EA, is a pretty familiar name in gaming. Mostly due to their love for microtransactions and that sweet, sweet green stuff in your wallet. Besides their previously mentioned characteristics, they also made some games. They made stuff like the Madden franchise, NASCAR Thunder, Tiger Woods PGA Tour, SSX, Need for Speed, Burnout, some 007 games, and more. Reason why I say some 007 games is because 007 has switched hands with developers a lot over the years. After Rareware's extremely successful whack at 007 on home consoles with GoldenEye 007, it was EA's turn to work on 007. In the span of their six-year reign over 007, spanning from 1999 to 2005, they made 11 007 games. Most of them got mixed reviews, with some good and bad ones thrown in there. We almost had 12 007 games by EA, with 007 Casino Royale, a game that was announced in 2006 being based off the upcoming Casino Royale film based off the 1953 novel. It ended up being cancelled due to its release not matching up with the films, so MGM lost a lot of money on licensing the franchise to EA. So after that, EA left 007 entirely, with Activision picking it up and releasing 007 Quantum of Solace, based off of the Casino Royale film and the Quantum of Solace film in 2008. So, the rest of 2006 came and went, and then came 2007, which brought... Well, they made a lot. But we're talking about this one! EA Playground, a very odd title in EA's game lineup over the years, thrown aside as shovelware in the bottom of the bargain bin. The game released on October 23rd, 2007 in North America, November 2nd in Europe, November 8th in Australia, and March 8th, 2008 in Japan. It released, and that was it. So I think it's about time for someone to actually pay attention to this oddball of a game. This is EA Playground for the Wii. The game opens up with kids laughing while the EA logo is present. Kids don't laugh, EA is the enemy, they took everything! The title screen is actually kind of nice in my opinion. It has a preview of the overworld, and the music is pretty cheery and happy, so that's a good sign. After making a save file, you get to choose your character to play as. All of these guys are pretty awesome, with the personalities and animations, but I think I found the character for me. Aw oh man, here comes Timothy! Alright, Timothy doesn't quite sound right. Now Tim! Tim is good! After we select him, we get introduced to the first part of the playground, the schoolyard, where the Sticker King tells us how the game works, and that he's the best at all the games on the playground. Don't get ahead of yourself, Sticker King, because Tim will rise to be victorious! Sticker King explains to us the basic mechanics of the game. There's kids all around the playground who specialize in a certain game. If we beat them at their game, we will get a golden sticker, which unlocks new areas around the playground. After we get the golden sticker that you place in your sticker book, the kids have some dares that they want you to participate in for marbles. Marbles can be found all around the playground, and if you have enough, you can buy super stickers from the Sticker King, which, when you buy them, you get new abilities that help you out in the games. I really like this mechanic. It gives the game an RPG vibe with achieving new abilities and upgrading what you already have. It's pretty cool in my opinion. This is something that I unfortunately have to mention. On the Playground Overworld, how you move your character is by using the D-pad on the Wiimote, not on its side, but by holding it vertically. I don't know why, but at least for me, this is extremely awkward. It's just so hard to turn on such a small D-pad, and you can't use the nunchuck for it, so we're stuck using the small D-pad to control Tim. There's a few things you can do in the playground besides the games. You can dribble a basketball, you can throw a basketball, you can dribble a basketball in a different area, you can throw a basketball in a different area, you can catch butterflies, you can dribble a basketball in a different area, you can throw a basketball in a different area, you can dribble a basketball in a different area, and you can catch butterflies in a different area. Why is there only three activities and why are they repeated so often? In my opinion, you should either have a ton of these or just not have them at all. This feels like the most careless attempt ever at extra content. They could have added, I don't know, maybe a yo-yo minigame? Making sandcastles in the sandbox? Hopscotch? Jump rope? Playing on swing sets? Were none of these good enough for minigames so we just got three repeated over and over? EA, before you take away everything, I have a message for you. 
The four locations in the game, the schoolyard, Gobi Park, the stadium, and Ravelwoods all have kids with games to play and dares to try. And with each location you unlock, the harder the games and the dares get. So let's look at all the games we can play. First we have Tetherball, which is probably the simplest game in EA Playground. This is one of my favorite games in EA Playground. Like I said, it's incredibly simple, which is a really good thing for a Wii minigame collection. Take for example baseball in Wii Sports. It's super simple compared to normal baseball, and there's a reason for that. Wii Sports was made as a simple minigame collection to demonstrate to people what the Wiimote can do. If the games in Wii Sports were more complicated, it would be harder to understand what the Wiimote was capable of doing. If it's a game all about baseball, like Mario Superstar Baseball or Mario Super Sluggers, then it's okay to be much more technical with it. Like I said, when it's a minigame collection like EA Playground or Wii Sports, you have to make it simple to make it easily understandable and not intimidating. I feel that EA Playground and Tetherball did really well at being simplistic, while still being fun. You just hit the ball, hoping that your opponent won't hit it. Get so many rotations around the pole, and you win. If you hit the ball consecutively, you'll build up your meter, and when your meter is full, you can unleash a very small, tiny, insignificant, microscopic fraction of Tim's power. The dares for Tetherball are fun because it's still Tetherball, but for some reason, the dares feel easier than the actual game. The first dare consists of only needing a small amount of rotations around the pole to win a game. It's just a very fast version of Tetherball. The challenge doesn't really increase, the game just goes by faster. Another Tetherball dare is to win around in a minute or under. Again, this challenge isn't really raised, it's just faster Tetherball. The last Tetherball dare is to stay in the game for 30 seconds or longer. This dare is insanely easy. You don't have to win, you just have to sit there and survive. As long as you know how to swing the Wiimote, you're good to go. EA Playground Tetherball is fun. The dares are lame for sure, but the actual game I feel is one of the best out of all the games. Just some good, simple, stupid Wiimote swinging action. Alright, next up we have Wall Ball, which is like Tetherball, it's pretty simplistic. But unlike Tetherball where I said it was stupid yet fun, this one's just stupid. Like Tetherball though, this one is super simple. Serve the ball against the wall and you and your opponent take turns hitting it. Whoever misses the ball, the other one gets a point. This one just takes forever. There's the maximum of five rounds of just hitting the ball over and over again until you or your opponent messes up. It gets stale pretty quickly. There's power-ups on the wall that you can get by hitting the ball. There's portals through the multiverse, power-ups to give you a full meter so you can unleash Super Saiyan Tim, and these blue stars that, to this day, I still don't know what they do. The dares for wall ball consist of hitting the ball against the wall a certain amount of times by yourself, which is insanely easy. Again, if you know how to swing the Wiimote, you're good to go. The next one consists of playing the game normally, but only with warp power-ups. This one is fun, but the gimmick wears off over time. Then you realize, yep, you are certainly playing wall ball with only warp power-ups. This is absolutely brainless. In the last wall ball, there is just playing wall ball, but this time there are no power-ups. None at all. It's just wall ball. Wall ball in EA Playground is long and boring, and that's with the power-ups. Without, this is dreadful. Overall, it's fine. It, it does the job, I guess. It's another game to add to EA Playground, I guess. Not horrible, but it's not great. Next up is slot cars, and yep, this is definitely slot cars, but with the added twist of bad controls. You hold the Wiimote vertically, pointing at the TV, you accelerate with the A button, double tap the A button for a limited boost, use items with the B button, and you change slots by twisting the Wiimote to the right and left. When you twist the Wiimote to change the slot, it works. Pretty well, actually. However, the problem that arises is that when you twist back to get your hand and the Wiimote into the neutral position, 90% of the time you'll go back to the slot you were just in. And of course, you can't use the nunchuck with this game, so you're stuck like this the whole time. This little oversight is enough to ruin the whole game. Aside from that very big blunder, it's honestly pretty fun. The tracks are all pretty decent, and the items are a nice touch. The dares in slot car racing are fun. There's one where you have to make a lap under a certain amount of time, which is easy, but like I said, it's still fun. The next dare is a normal race, but every lap, the last person gets eliminated. Like I said before, easy, but fun. Then the last dare is just racing with no power-ups. Like I said, it's easy, but this time it's not fun. Slot car racing is fun. It's a very welcome addition to EA Playground, besides its family dollar quality controls, but overall, it's fun. Next up is Dart Shootout. And before we get into it, let's think about this for a little bit. We have Tetherball, and we have Wall Ball. Those are perfectly fine in normal games for the playground. Slot cars is a stretch. It doesn't really seem like you'd be at the playground, but it's still a normal, friendly game that kids would like. Then there's Dart Shootout, where you go around provoking war. Maybe I missed something when I was in school, and of course every school is different, but I have a hard time believing that the teachers, the parents, the school counselor, and the school principal of EA Elementary all agreed to let the kids have these bazookas that shoot missiles that drain their health and life. 
This one sounds pretty exciting, but it's actually kind of boring. It's definitely not bad. It's still a bit of fun. It's just a very basic attempt at a rail shooter. It's basically links crossbow trainings, target practice levels, and defender levels mashed together. And yeah, that's pretty much the best explanation I can give. You shoot the targets with the angry faces on them, but the happy faces is if you shoot those, you'll lose points. Then in later phases of the game, guys show up and try to take Tim down. But little do they know, they're going up against Tim! At the near end of the stage, there's a boss fight that is exactly like the other guys, but they just have more health. I've never been more disappointed in my life. When you defeat the boss, though, they actually fall down and lose consciousness and die right in front of you. I mean, I know EA is dark, but man, this is messed up. The dares for dart shootout are pretty simple. You have to complete the game with a specific number of points or higher. There's beating the game under a certain amount of time, and there's beating the game with a certain amount of health. Dart shootout is already extremely repetitive, but with these dares, it'll drive you insane. Overall, I still think it's fun, but it could have been so much better. Next up is... Probably the most complicated game in EA Playground. This is probably the worst game in EA Playground. So far, we've had pretty serviceable controls, besides slot cars racing absolute blunder. For a game like this on the Wii, I think it's been pretty alright. But, there's one game in this collection that has worse controls than slot car racing. This game is torture, pure anger, it's agony, agony itself, it came from death's basement, it's that bad. Alright, it's not that bad, but it's definitely not pleasant. KICKS! It's soccer, both ninja elements thrown in as the game says, which is cool, this is a pretty awesome concept. However, the execution is so bad, just because of the controls. A lot of Wii games around 2006 and 2007 that weren't made or published by Nintendo had issues like these. They overestimated what the Wiimote was actually capable of. They made specific and complicated control methods with the Wiimote, which result in barely anything working at all. Kix only has two dares, thankfully. One where you have to win by shutout, so you can't let the other team score any points, and the other one is playing goalie to block incoming shots. The first one isn't too bad, but playing goalie. This is where these terrible controls truly shine. Playing goalie actually has the most simple controls of kicks, and somehow they messed it up on the simple part. You just shift the Wiimote left and right, but some way, somehow, the sensitivity for it is completely random. There's moments where if you breathe on the Wiimote a little too hard, Tim will jump to the dark side of the moon and back, and then there's times where you could tape the Wiimote to a ceiling fan and Tim will just stand there, or Tim will sidestep two seconds after the ball went in the goal. It is so unpredictable and inconsistent, it's just a guessing game at some points. It's putrid! Yeah, that's Kicks, an abomination of a minigame that sometimes functions. It's kind of a shame, because this one actually looks pretty cool, but it just didn't achieve what it was meant to achieve. Alright, let's go to something more fun and positive. Paper Racers. This one is pretty good in my opinion. You're just peacefully gliding through the air, avoiding obstacles, and going through checkpoints to restore some time to the clock as you go. In the later half of the game, when you play Paper Racers, though, it picks up. It's no longer a peaceful flight. This becomes a race for your life against the clock. I know it's a kid's game, but man, this can get stressful. You start off with a basic paper airplane, but you can buy more with marbles from the Sticker King. The planes even have different speed and aerial stats, which is pretty neat. There's little speed and boost power-ups that you can collect while flying around. The speed ones just give you an instant burst of speed, while the boost ones you can collect and save over time for when you need them. You activate the boost by thrusting the Wiimote forward, which isn't the best thing I've ever experienced, I would much rather just press a button, but hey, at least it works, which is something Kix can't say for itself. The dares aren't anything special, but it's still fun nonetheless. There's collecting a certain number of colored rings, collecting a certain amount of colored rings again, and collecting colored rings to get enough points before you reach the finish. Again, the dares are not that interesting, but they're still enjoyable. Overall, it's pretty fun. Simple, but fun. It's tied for my favorite with Tetherball, so yeah, pretty good. Now, the last game included in EA Playground has arrived. Dodgeball. Dodgeball had to have been one that EA must have been super proud of, because they felt the need to brag about it on the box art. One thing I find absolutely hilarious about this is that I'm pretty sure there wasn't ever a release of the game where they didn't have Dodgeball. Even the DS version has Dodgeball. So this wonderful statement means absolutely nothing. Anyway, it's Dodgeball. There isn't that much to explain here. It's Dodgeball on the Wii. There's one where you have to stay in for a few seconds while the other kids throw dodgeballs at you. Don't worry guys, Tim will get his revenge one day. There's one where when your teammates get knocked out, they're gone. They're definitely not on the sidelines. They're gone. Don't look over there. They're gone. And then there's just dodging dodgeballs however many times in a row. My thoughts on the EA Playground exclusive dodgeball? 
It's okay. Alright, Tim defeated the Playground's best in all seven of the games. Now he has to conquer the King. The Sticker King. Sticker King wants Tim to try and beat him at the Gauntlet, which is playing all of the games against the Playground's best, and of course, the Sticker King. It can actually get a little challenging here and there. Games like Tetherball and Paper Racers were easy just because they were so short. Games like Slot Car Racing and Dart Shootout were awful because if you mess up, you have to play the game again. So yeah, not necessarily difficult, but it is tedious, especially if you mess up. There was one basketball activity that was way harder than this. I don't know if I'm just really bad at this or what, but this took me almost 30 minutes to complete. Just this one little activity was 10 times harder than the gauntlet. I don't know if I should be proud or embarrassed. Finally though, we beat Sticker King in his own games. Tim's blood, sweat, and tears have affected the playground on a grand scale. Gone is the rule of the tyrant Sticker King, and now, King Tim takes the throne once and for all. Though, now that we beat Sticker King, there is literally nothing else to do. There is no post-game content. There is nothing else to do in this entire game, besides to start a new save file. Alrighty, that was EA Playground. It's interesting. I just find it weird that EA made a game for the Wii and DS, published it, with their name literally in the title, release it, and completely forget about it. People just completely overlooked the game. It got mixed reviews with people calling it yet another Wii Sports knockoff, which I don't think is fair. Don't get me wrong, I definitely believe EA and other developers and publishers tried to capitalize on Wii Sports success with their own minigame collection, but third-party minigame collections on Wii in general are often referred to as rip-offs. You really couldn't release a minigame collection on Wii at all without it getting heavily slandered with bad reviews. So while I recognize that most Wii minigame collections are just ripoffs of Wii Sports, EA Playground just feels different. It doesn't feel like that stereotypical ripoff. I'm not going to say it's great, because it's not, but it tried. It really did. It tried to make fun games for kids to have fun with. It tried to make funny, goofy character animations and sounds for kids to laugh at. And for that, I like it. EA Playground... You're pretty alright. Okay, but for real, there's nothing else to do in this game. Literally nothing. Oh wait, there's a trailer for Boogie?! Oh heck yeah, I want a Boogie! I got a Boogie rash.